In this collection of videos, we're thinking through how we understand and perhaps misunderstand the whole notion of salvation. In this collection of videos, we're looking at the question of salvation and how it fits within the larger biblical story, which is, of course, where we find the promises of salvation upon which Christians um, over the last 2,000 years have depended so strongly. The problem is, as I hinted in a previous uh, video, that so many Christians think of salvation simply in terms of going to heaven. And if you say, well, it doesn't quite mean that, people say, well, isn't there then a hope for what happens to me after death or somebody that I've loved who's died, what's the hope for them? And the strong answer has to be, yes, of course, right through the Bible, but especially in the New Testament, the teaching of Jesus and the early church, it is clear that the God who made the world is sovereign over death and beyond, and his love is unbreakable and unshakable, and death itself can't touch it. But the way that that story comes out as it gets clarified in the New Testament is, to many people's surprise, a two-stage post-mortem reality. It isn't about dying and going to heaven. It's about dying and then waiting until God makes his whole new creation, the new heavens and the new earth, and gives us new bodies to be part of that new creation. Now, when I say this to people, often they say, well, what about the time in between? And the answer to our surprise is that the New Testament writers aren't very interested in the question of where are people between bodily death and bodily resurrection. There are little hints. Jesus says to the brigand who is being crucified alongside him, today you will be with me in paradise. But paradise isn't a word meaning the ultimate destination. It's a word meaning a blissful garden where you go to be rested and refreshed until the new thing happens for which we're all waiting. And there are other passages similarly. Paul says in Philippians, my desire, as he's there in prison quite expecting to face the death penalty, says my desire is to depart and be with the Messiah, which is far better and then he says, but actually to remain in the flesh is going to be helpful for you, so that's probably what's going to happen. But going to be with Christ, going to be with Jesus the Messiah, isn't the end of the story. It is the temporary place where God looks after his people until the time when he makes his new creation and raises us from the dead. That's how the biblical story of salvation actually works. Because, and this is the crucial thing, salvation is not salvation from the world. It's God's salvation of the world. God so loved the world, says John, in one of the most famous verses in the Bible. And when Jesus says, my kingdom is not from this world, in later on in John's gospel, he doesn't mean my kingdom is an otherworldly thing. He means my kingdom doesn't grow within this world. It's not from this world in that sense, but it is for this world. It's about new creation because salvation is ultimately God's rescue of his whole world and his people from death itself. And if we think in terms of the old story which comes from uh, very popular philosophies in the first century and uh, which eased their way into the church thinking in roughly the third and fourth centuries and have been to and fro in Christian thinking ever since, that sense of a soul leaving this world, leaving this body and going into a non-bodily, otherworldly existence, that isn't actually rescue from death. That is more or less a description of death. And the Bible is quite emphatic. Think of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that the last enemy is death itself, and death is to be defeated. Death is to be swallowed up, he says, in victory. So the normal assumption of a soul leaving a body and going off to a place called heaven simply isn't sustained in the New Testament. Indeed, the New Testament never uses the word heaven to describe or denote 
the place where God's people go either after their death or the long-term future after the, the new creation has been inaugurated. This is, as I said, a philosophical idea which crept into Christianity and certainly when I was growing up, it was the assumption of all the people that I knew in the churches that I attended and so on. So salvation then in the Bible is not rescue from the good creation. It's the rescue of the good creation, including ourselves within that. The trouble you see is that if you say salvation is about leaving this world and going off somewhere else, then when you read the Old Testament, it looks as though it's missing the point. It's not talking about people dying and going to heaven um, because uh, uh, there are hardly any passages in the Old Testament which even hint at such a thing. Okay, Elijah is taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, but there's no sense that he is thereby being a role model. Indeed, in the book of Malachi, it says that uh, Elijah will come back to restore all things before God himself comes to dwell with his people on earth to put everything right at last. And in the New Testament as well, you can ransack it for texts which you can make speak about dying and going to heaven. But again and again, if you do that, you find what you've done is you've dismantled the basic biblical story. We'll talk about this in a subsequent session in, in these videos. But the basic biblical story isn't about individuals going somewhere else. It's about God, God's creation, and God's rescue of, that's salvation of, his creation and his people. The Bible as a whole, with Jesus as its focal point, tells a larger story. The danger otherwise is that we end up with a formula. We say, well, okay, how do I get to heaven? And somebody says, well, you've got to believe this, or you've got to behave in a certain way, or you have to belong to this group, the church, or some subset of the church, or whatever. As though, if you get the formula right, you'll end up in heaven where you belong. But the Bible isn't about that story to be reduced to a formula in that way. The Bible tells a very different story. It is precisely the story of salvation, but it isn't the way that most people have traditionally imagined. What, the, what is going on in the Bible is something we'll be looking at in subsequent videos. We have several videos in this series on the whole meaning of salvation. Please feel free to click the link to follow and watch the next one.